Hello everyone and welcome back to Modular Mayhem. So I think I've finally got this next version of Gems ready to go. Just going to do a little bit more testing here. So I've got the bows all fixed up. Their textures are correct. They have variable draw speed. You can see the Heliodor it draws pretty fast. Uh, if you were to make something like a flint bow that would draw pretty slowly. And uh, one thing I, I did is, uh, previously with the mining tools, you could only place something by right-clicking with them if it was directly after the tool. But now, if it can't find anything in that slot, it will check slot number 9, the one at the end of the hotbar. So if you prefer to keep your torch bandolier on that slot, that's all good. And actually... That seems like a really good ideal to me because that frees up a slot right here, which I could put a different tool in. So that's nice. Alright, and something that I've just spent uh, quite a lot of time working on is achievements for this mod. And uh may add more later on, I just kind of... Added a few here just for, for uh just for fun, and uh, several to kind of give you some hints as to the progression of the mod. So we need a tool from this mod. Oops, I did not mean to throw that on the ground. Uh, I that requires you to craft a tool. One way to do that, if you already have a tool, is by decorating it. So let me see. Got a lot of amethyst. That'll work. So that will give the, me the achievement for crafting a tool as well as the tool decorating achievement. Which again is kind of there to give you some hints as to the system. It says customize and repair a tool by crafting it with gems and maybe some other things. So it doesn't quite tell you everything, but it gives you a pretty big hint as to uh, this particular feature. Okay, so now uh, we have two more achievements we've unlocked. One is for mining 1,000 blocks or more with a tool. And that proceeds on to two additional mining-related achievements. And so we've got one for... Crafting a tool with an iron tipped upgrade. And I'm going to go ahead and skip that step and go straight to diamond. And the tool upgrade recipes have changed. Let's see, don't already have some laying around. So now you need to craft an upgrade base item like that. That gives you four of them. And I can just craft that with a diamond to get the diamond tipped upgrade. Then I'm going to go ahead and put that on my pick. Not because it needs it, really, but mostly for the achievement. Although it does give it a little extra durability, so that's nice. Okay, now it'll give me the iron tip achievement as well. Okay, and the iron tipped one leads to a an achievement for mining gems. And the diamond tipped one leads to one for mining chaos ore, which again, this is all about basically showing you the progression. So let's see, I could go ahead and get that achievement by just pulling a gem out there. And I don't know if we have any chaos ore laying around. I don't think we do. Okay, so I'll, I'll have to get that achievement later on. Okay, and the gem's achievement leads to crafting a torch bandolier since it requires a gem, and the chaos or achievement leads to crafting enchantment tokens. Alright, and since uh, my pickaxe here, it already has over 5,000 blocks mined on it, so if I mine pretty much anything with it, that should give me the achievement. Alright. And the next achievement in the line is for mining 10,000 blocks. And the last one is for mining 100,000 blocks. If you get that achievement, uh, tweet about it on Twitter. Uh, or send me a tweet or something. 
how do you how do you say that? <laughs> Let me know if you get this achievement. Uh, I'm not sure how reasonable mining a hundred thousand blocks with one tool is, but mining ten thousand will not be too difficult. Oh, and and if you're curious, uh, my username on pretty much everything is the same. So go go look me up on Twitter. Got the same profile picture and everything. You can't miss it. Okay, so I guess that's, uh, oh, well, I could actually get the Torch Bandolier achievement. Uh, you don't necessarily need one to craft one from scratch again here. It's actually possible to uh, change the little decoration bit on the Torch Bandolier. And let's see, what should I change it out for? I guess I'll do the barrel for now. Just craft it with a gem, and that'll change the little decoration bit, and that'll give you the achievement. Alright, that should be everything I can do without finding uh, Chaos Ore, and we'll just see how many of these mining achievements I actually get. But I think that's a, a nice little addition. It'll kind of help anyone who's new to the mod if they actually bother to look at the achievements. So that's good. Oh, and by the way, this is actually before the uh, Saturday stream. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'll probably record the rest of this episode after that stream. I don't know. Just kind of depends on how, how it works out. This is technically Friday since it's 2 a.m. Yeah, I've been working on these achievements for like two hours or something. <laughs> I've just been having way too much fun with them. All right, well, I will cut back in in a couple of days or so, whatever. I have some kind of plan. And welcome back, everyone. So... I just finished up my stream a couple hours ago, and I think I discovered a place I wanted to settle in. Uh, I would like to say I did upgrade these water wheels a bit, so apparently you can connect three of them together on a single kinetic, kinetic dynamo. I doubt Chaotic knows that, so I went ahead and expanded the wheels that he built, uh, except for this one. And these two were not even connected, so I connected those, so that should be a lot more power. For his arc furnace to use, uh, although I think it would still drain our entire supply in a couple of seconds if it if it could. All right, so I'm gonna head over to the spot that I found. It's a pretty good distance away, as you can see. It's about 1,300 blocks from spawn. So one thing that's pretty cool about it is it just has a lot of like mountains and stuff. It does have a jungle. So, and there is this, I guess you'd call it a triple <laughs> meteor crater, uh, sort of. There are two that are overlapping, and one that's kind of off to the side, which doesn't seem to have a meteor in it, unless it's, like, buried or something like that, but it's just a crater. So that's kind of odd, but we do have one of each type of press from AE2, so we could get started with that whenever. As for when I'm going to be moving out of the spawn house, I don't actually know yet. I would like to get it done sooner rather than later, but I also need to think of what to build. Uh, obviously, I could just do a temporary house in the area and then swap it out later. But I would like to have some idea of what I, I want to do. And fortunately, it's usually much later into the series that I have an ideal of what I want to build. And uh, how's my flight? It's okay. I think I could probably fly for over 10 minutes continuously. Something like that. Oh, I did chop down one of these rainbow trees on stream. That was crazy. We've got ridiculous amounts of dye now. It even dropped uh, two of the notch apples, the golden apples you craft with blocks of gold, and about 20 of the regular ones. Okay, so this is the area. You can see it does have a jungle here. 
But, uh, even got a big oak tree over there. That's kind of cool. And <laughs> there's this cliff here, which that's kind of funny looking now that I look at, at it. It's very square, but I suppose that's all right. It's just a very nice looking area, in my opinion. And I do like the lush redwoods. Uh, one suggestion I had was to build a UFO. I don't know. I might. Might try. Oh, uh, here's the uh, craters over here. You got this weird double crater which had two meteors in it. That one's really tiny. It's a little bitty baby meteor. But it did have a chest in it. And this crater over here I don't think has a meteor in it. Unless it's just buried underground or something. Which I suppose is possible. I don't know. But we've got one of each press, so it's not a big deal either way. So somewhere in this area is where I will be building. Just not sure where. I could build into this little valley with all the mountains surrounding me, but I don't know. Uh, Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to just go with uh, plain floating platforms, which uh, I've not done recently. Let's see, season four, I was on a floating island for the last few episodes, which actually I, I still need to record the last episode of that. Season three, Chaotic had floating platforms, which was his season one. But I lived in a tower after living in a treehouse. Oh, all the, the vines are doing weird things. I, I should have fast render off. Fast render on. Really? I thought storage drawers didn't render correctly if that was on. Hmm. Well, that seems to fix the flickering issue. Alright, and if you're not quite sure what I mean by uh, floating platforms, it's just kind of a base ideal I had a while back where you basically just construct a bunch of platforms in the sky, connect them however you want, and it's just a really easy base to work with. Obviously not very accessible from the ground, which is one of its downsides. But it's just really easy to build and work with because all you have to do is construct a floor and then build on top of it. And if you need more room, you just build another platform. So it's very easy to do, which makes it appealing, but also slightly boring, although it can look pretty good if done right. So, I don't know, I may just dig into the mount a mountain somewhere to start off with. Uh, maybe just, like, right around here if there's a good spot. Yeah, that's not too bad, so I could just clear some land around here, dig into the wall, maybe build a little entranceway, and just live in a cave until I get everything all sorted out to figure out what I want to build, what materials I want to use, and so on and so forth. So on Modded Minecraft Season 4, one thing I tried to do was spread out my stuff as much as possible. Uh, the tower, although it was convenient and easy to work with, from the tower from Season 3, it had the disadvantage of everything being in just a couple of chunks. So logging in would take a while, uh, whenever you traveled to the area with the tower, the world would take a while to load in, it, just because of all the tile entities in one chunk. Or in just a couple of chunks. But you know what I mean. So... Having stuff spread out would probably be beneficial. At least to some degree. It, it may not matter that much on this pack. This is kind of a medium-sized mod pack, so... 
I guess I'll probably just do whatever, and if it starts to become a problem, then I can start spreading things out. Although, odds are, it won't become a problem. So that was kind of a mistake that uh, I made with Season 4, I suppose. Uh, the server ended up causing tro uh, trouble anyway. Although it wasn't quite as bad as Season 3, but I was still getting kind of bored of the mod pack. It just... I don't know, it wasn't that great. It just had too much weird random stuff in it. Oh, hi, zombie. Goodbye, zombie. I need to put a diamond tip on this axe. Give it some extra durability. Okay, we have clarified space. And I don't have an axe. Or, I have an axe. I don't have a shovel, is what I was trying to say. Uh, I don't think I even own a good shovel yet. Okay, there we go. Just hollow out a little cave. And this is where I can store my things. And so on and so forth. I mean, it would be nice if there was an easier way to get back to spawn, though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what options we have for fast travel here. So, Silence Gems normally adds teleporters, but in this pack, they're disabled. And I've kind of been thinking about whether or not I want to change that or just leave it default. Uh, for now, I have actually re-enabled the anchors. So I could make a return home charm if I wanted to. Those do require a teleporter in order to work correctly. But otherwise, I'm probably going to try to play the mod pack as it was intended. I think there is some other kind of teleportation method in this pack. But I'm not sure what- oh, some kind of beacon near here. That's a little bit obnoxious, actually. So whenever I stand in this corner, I'm gonna have the yellow effect. Okay. How big is this? This is 7x7? Seven seven? Okay. So this is probably a good enough space for this little starter area. Maybe make it one more tall. How close am I to getting to 10,000 blocks achievement? I've still got a ways to go. Oh yes, uh... uh oh yeah, I did cover the achievements already. <laughs> Just recorded that like a day or two ago, and yet I've already forgotten. Alright, so we'll call that good enough for now. Uh, I do have enough charge to get back home. So I'll probably call this the end of the episode. I'm gonna have to figure out some way to travel between here and spawn more effectively because I don't want to just fly back and forth all the time. For starters, I probably won't be able to keep up with charging my Chaos Gem doing that. And second of all, it's just kind of annoying and- oh, I, I really need to kill these Endermen. Like, really badly. Oh, I wish I had sharpness on the sword, but it has looting on it. You jerk. No, not the water. Where'd you go? Down there somewhere. Come on, you jerk, where did you go?
Okay, I really don't know where the Cinderman went. He's somewhere around here. I'm going to keep looking. I uh, really need to go to the end pretty soon. Okay, well, I better go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.